Uh, Commissioner Spring makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I'm sorry, I didn't see. Okay. Uh, I'm up front. Sorry? I'm up front. No, I have to stay behind. Okay. Commissioner Perez ran second. Did you have any questions? All in favor of acknowledging the receipt of those, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, no. Majority approved. Yes, sir. I look, uh, inquiry at this point, and then you, you, you may wait for new business. Okay. I'll, I'd like to make an inquiry about something that's not in the month of business. Okay. Do you want me to do that now, or do you want to wait for new business? Let's go for it now. Right. <laughs> uh, can I have a little laugh there during this month? Sure. Oh, uh, thank you. <coughs> I got, I uh, was given a letter that was dated August the 6th, and it's from your office. Okay. Um, and it addresses, well, what it addresses is our health care services at the jail. That's going to be the quality corrections health care. And I looked in these minutes and I saw one that said corrected, so I thought that was correct. So but I find that it's not in minutes, I find it's not in budget minutes, I find it's not in financial management minutes, it's not in anybody's minutes. So, I got to do a little bit of digging, and on August the 6th, I, was, I got this letter that was dated August the 6th, and it basically says the county, Lake County elects not to extend their contract with this company, QCHC. Uh, I just thought I missed something. I thought, well, I'm getting old or something, and I missed something somewhere, because sure did goodness, you know, we, we, we didn't tell them. So I done a little bit of digging, and I found out that it, it is worth saying that the Tennessee Supreme Court recognizes that it is the job of this county's legislative body to make all decisions as it regards to medical and their services within our facility. Uh, it's not the job of anybody else, it's our job. So I thought, well, okay, I'm going to pull all the minutes from the law enforcement committee. I pulled the last minutes for the last two years from the law enforcement committee. I found five instances where this company was referenced. First one, on November the 22nd, it's when basically the sheriff, Black at that time, and the CFO stated that we needed these people, we were liable, we were having problems, <coughs> all the things, we all remember that. And that was in the law enforcement committee meeting. The second time it was mentioned, was January the 23rd, uh, Chief Deputy Bradford at that law enforcement committee, the committee said that this company was a phenomenal asset to the jail. That's his work, not mine. On the 23rd of February, Chief Deputy stated that they were still pleased with the services. On the 24th of on the January of 24th, Sheriff McConnell, McConnell stated in the minutes that it was a godsend to the department. On March 24th, everybody present, there was a discussion, and the discussion was in the minutes, and every person there said there was an invaluable asset, and it saved us on ER trips, Dennisville, hospital visits, everything you could think of, and that was in March. 2025. That's four short months ago, four and a half, depending on how you look at it. So I, I just decided, I, I've got to figure out, I've got to figure this out. So, you know, four months ago they were great, and now we're going to terminate their contract and not renew it. I don't understand that. Um, so I looked into, started trying to find out what happened. Something had to happen in those four months. And what I found is, or what I think I know, and I'm going to say what I think I know, so I don't know that it's a fact, but I think I know this. Uh, there was a problem between now Sheriff we have now, my father, and the doctor on the base on a prescription matter for him, from what I understand. And basically, they got a pretty hard for I don't know if that had anything to do with this or not. not that's not for me to say. But I did do my homework and called TCI, which is the Tennessee Corrections Institute. And I talked to a gentleman up there. And that gentleman said to me these words, basically. He said that uh, the TCI rules clearly states that medical decisions shall be made by the medical provider and that shall not be countermanded by any person. Any person shall not be countermanded by it. So, you know, that's, that's what they said. Um, I, I just don't know what else to say other than that. Um, everything I can find says that this company's done a great job until this happened. I don't know if that's what happened or not, but I don't believe we should terminate the contract without the county legislative body being made aware because the Supreme Court says we're the ones to do the work. Not anybody. Doesn't matter. So um, that's, that's why I'm kind of
Okay, yeah, it looks like to me they did a great job. I don't know what the problem is, but I know they were great, 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 great in the four months ago. Saying that, I do have a motion if you'd like. Well, I I don't think you know enough facts. Let me let me speak to this. Let me speak to I'm hang on, I'm just speaking on my own. Here. I read you one thing you didn't read this contract. Huh? I did read part of the contract. The contract terminated in July. It's very terminated. Six months old. We're in a 90 day kind of a look set. And at that time, they agreed, or the mayor and the sheriff said, well, let's sit it out and let everybody bid out again, including this company. This, this company. So the contract terminated. Only prudent to go out and try to find, see if anybody else can do the job better and cheaper. That's what we all do. We do it on most every contract and we terminate. We go out to the floor and request the proposals. So that's what we're doing. Yeah, but what I, what I say to that is that it's not, it's a county legislative body. It's a law enforcement committee job to say, hey, we want to go out for a new contract. And then go, we have a, but we have a committee system for a reason. And that committee doesn't know anything about this at all. So, I mean, I've read the meetings, there's not, there's not a word in there about this. Well, we just had a meeting when we first brought up the last meeting that we got anything on the country for being terminated or an issue with it or nothing. But if I read the contract correctly, it can be renewed in 90 days forever. All of both parties agree. Is that fair? Uh, it was in a 90 day period. And it can, it can go to another. So it's kind of a probation period as to whether or not either party wants to do it. Either party can terminate the contract in, I think, 60 days. But the contract was over, it was terminated, and they went for, for they sent out an RFP request for proposals, including this company. And if they want to continue the contract, they can bid on it like everybody else. We like to bid our contracts. I just, I don't think we're going to move about it. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Oh, I've got a motion, but uh, uh, you're going to lie. Well, we we'll put that up under new business. I may have overstepped allowing you at this time. Let me bring it up under. Three days. I know. I know. Okay. Let's see. <coughs> Okay, next item on there, uh, while we're, we're not going to be able to act on the next item on there because a uh, next item is voided due to a multiple violation of public meeting law. So we have to start all over on that, advertise everything, and start it for hopefully it can come up in September and there won't be any violation or it will restrict us on Naming somebody in that uh, fourth district. Uh, next item consideration for approval to reappoint whole blocker to the planning commission. That term will expire August 2028. What's the will of the commission on this item? So moved. All right, okay. Commissioner Eldridge makes a motion. Do I have a second? I'm sorry, so, I can't hear. Yeah. Can you uh, use the earth? This Vista, I, it doesn't work. It does so. not. Uh, Can you say it a little louder? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Do you have your uh, computer with you? Yes, sir. Okay. We're on the item for reappointing <coughs> cold blocker. Okay. Okay. And uh, Commissioner Eldridge made the motion. I didn't catch uh, uh, Commissioner Douglas seconded. Any questions? All in favor of approval, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Unanimously approved. I got a question. Can we back up just a second? Yes, sir. I didn't hear you because I couldn't hear you very well. I'm hard to hear you anyway because uh, I'm up there in front. But why was the uh, appointment of the district court <coughs> county commissioner, why was it changed? There was a violation of the public law. There was sunshine violations in this. And the rule is you got to start all over once that does it avoids everything that we could do tonight in that time. Okay, next item is consideration for approval to reappoint. Terry Rogers, Pat Haynes, and Danny Walker to the beer board. That term will expire September 2026. What's the will of commission on this item? Okay. Okay. Mr. Bradley makes a motion to have a second. Commissioner Nick second. Any question on this item? All in favor of approval, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, no. Unanimously approved. Next 
item, consideration for approval to appoint Mark Mitchell to the Chamber of Commerce Board, term to expire September 2026. What's the will of commission on this item? I move. Uh, commission, no, actually makes the motion for I'll approval. Do I have a second? Commissioner, I'll give you a second. So the motion. <laughs> All in favor of approval, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, no. Unanimously approved. Next item, consideration for approval to appoint Steve Sprague disability appointment, excuse me. Um, Steve Sprague, Ben Brown, Kate Gillen, and Doug Cunningham to the Financial Management Committee. That term will expire September of 2026. What's the bill Commissioner O'Brien makes a motion for approval of a second. Uh, Commissioner Rogers seconds. Any questions on this item? All in favor of approval, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, no. Unanimously approved. <coughs> Next item, we're taking two parts. Uh, consideration for approval to reappoint Glenn Douglas, Steve Spray, Dan Walker, Mark Mitchell to the Fire EMA Committee. Uh, we did have Bonnie Caldwell decline another term. So I would entertain a motion. There's four of those that we agree. We entertain a motion uh, for reappointment of those four. Is that right? Mr. Fredrand, is that, is that you? Mr. Fredrand makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Mr. Spray seconds. Any questions on this one? All in favor of reappointment of those, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, no. Now approved. Now I need to get our list on um, who is eligible on there. Here are the ones that do not have four committees. Uh, ben Brown uh, does not. Bonnie Caldwell doesn't with that resignation, but I don't guess she wants to be put that on there. Uh, Mark Mitchell. Uh, Miriam Hackett, Daniel Eldridge, Jason Nix, Corey Young, Ricky Bradford, Liam Douglas, and Steve Guckenberg. <coughs> now, here's a side item on this. We, we discovered when we were looking at all these that Commissioner uh, Terry Lynn Rogers, she is on five committees and she didn't know it. Uh, so, during this next month, if you'll select one of those that you'd like to be taken off or you choose to be placed on one of those uh, before that. Did y'all hear all of those that are eligible? Is any of those wants to serve in this position, please raise your hand. Okay, you go. Commissioner Tackett, Commissioner Duncanberg, anyone else? Would y'all like to nominate yourselves, please? I nominate myself. I nominate myself. Okay. We have two people that have been nominated. Do we have a motion that nomination cease and we vote on those two? So moved. Commissioner Spray makes that motion. Do I have a second? No, sir. Commissioner seconds it. All in favor of us voting on those two when we close nominations, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. Here's what we will do. We will call roll, and when your name is called, you'll say Duncanburg or uh, uh, Tackett. Everybody understands. We have to. We have to. One of them has to receive 12 votes to be elected. Okay? And for the new to your reading. Guntenberg. Brown. Guntenberg. Caldwell. Guntenberg. Rogers. Taggett. Ashley. Guntenberg. Ewan. Guntenberg. Mitchell. Taggett. Tackett. Taggett. Spray. Guntenberg. Eldridge. Taggett. Nix. Guntenberg. Taylor. Guntenberg. Cunningham. Guntenberg. Bryant. Guntenberg. Douglas. Gunterberg. Gunterberg. Frasrin. Taggett. 
you for committee's house. You got to go. Okay, thank you. Next item, uh, consideration for approval to reappoint Andrew Taylor, Jack Ashley, Pat Haynes, Danny Walker, and Dr. Theresa Morrison to the Lincoln County Ethics Committee. Those terms will expire September 2025. What's the real commission on this item? So moved. Okay, Commissioner Rogers makes a motion for approval. We have a second. Commissioner uh, Walker second. Any questions on those? All in favor of the reappointment of those, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, no. <coughs> and then we'll see it through. Next side, we'll take this in two parts also. Uh, we've got four of the commissioners that agreed to be reappointed. Uh, consideration for approval to reappoint Corey Young, Ricky Brown, Terry Rogers. Bonnie Caldwell to the personnel committee. We will divide those, those four of the entertainment motion for approval for their reappointment. So moved. Mr. Ashley makes a motion for approval. Do I have a second? Mr. Ewing, second. Any questions? All in favor of approval, vote four, please say aye. Aye. Uh, we oppose no. Unanimously approved. Now we have a vacancy. Ben Brown declined to serve another term on that committee. Uh, you want me to read those names again of the commissioners that's eligible to fill that? Okay. They are Bobby uh, Caldwell, Gary uh, Tackett, Daniel Eldridge, Jason Nix, Tori Young, Ricky Bryant. William Douglas. Who that's it. Any any commissioner want to fill that one to that list that I call that? <coughs> Thank you. 
amendments. I hope it makes Mr. Franklin makes that motion to have a second. So I make the vote of seconds. Any questions? All in favor of the approval, please say aye. Aye. We oppose no. Unanimously approved. Next item. Consideration for approval to reappoint Doug Cunningham, Jason Nick, Jack Ashley, Steve Duncanberg, and Anthony Taylor to the Solid Waste Committee. Those terms will expire September 2026. This is the only commission. Mr. Bryan makes a motion for approval to have a second. Second. Mr. Spray seconds. All in favor of approval, please say aye. Aye. We oppose no. Next item, consideration for approval. Randy D. Lapp, Eddie Creason, Brenda Roll to the Three Star Housing Committee. Uh, those terms will expire September of 2025. What's the will commission on this item? So moved. Okay, Mr. Rogers makes a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, Commissioner Nick second. All in favor of approval, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, no? Next item, and uh, Judge Andy Meyer did request that this be a reappointment of uh, his uh, judicial commissioners. So, consideration for approval to reappoint Ernie Morgan, Tommy Sanders, Brian Rutledge, and Daniel Johnson as the judicial commissioner. Those terms will expire September 2025. What's the will of the commission on that? So moved. Mr. Douglas Macy, Commissioner Bryant seconds. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, no. Unanimously approved. We were ready for the library report. Megan. Which is Tracy Perkins and the Lincoln County Plan. First of all, is to call for uh, public hearing and vote. It's file number 2024 R7. <coughs> it's a request to rezone 54.5 acre parcel known as tax map uh, 63 parcel 25.02 on Old Quick Road from A1 to R3 heavy residential. The owner and applicant have requested the privilege to rezone R3 for the purpose of creating. Uh, subdivision. The developer plans to connect to public sewer for this project, which is a requirement of the R3 zoning. Uh, surrounding properties to the north, east, and west are zoned A1. Property to the south is located in Alabama because that is the state line. There are uh, road. Uh, property is not located within the flood area. And we are here today asking for a public hearing and vote at the next county commission. They did receive a, re a favorable recommendation from the Planning Commission on August 5th for this request. Okay, do I have a motion called for the public hearing to be at 5.30 prior to our September meeting? Mm -hmm. Commissioner Fredman makes a motion. Do I have a second? Yes, I do. Commissioner, you have seconds. Any questions on this? Call for public hearing next month. All in favor of approval of that, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, no. Um, file number 2024 R6 is a request to rezone a 4.53 acre parcel known as tax map 427 for a total parcel 46 on Old Lincoln Road from A1 to C1. General Commercial A1 is an agricultural uh, zoning, and this they're asking to go general commercial. 
uh, on applicant have requested this for establishing a retail store surrounding properties or agricultural, residential, religious, and educational. There are no permitted commercial locations within the vicinity of the property. Background on C1. C1 General Commercial District was established by this commission, by this county commission, and made effective August 2015. C1 provides areas in which the center for use of the land is devoted to commercial activities along with the principal thoroughfares of Lincoln County. This is not on principal thoroughfare, it's on county road. Um, in Lincoln County's thoroughfare plan, the primary and principal thoroughfares are state highways. This is not a state highway. On the of July 9th, the Planning Commission gave a favorable recommendation for this file, although I believe they have, um, from what I understand at the last Planning Commission meeting, discussed that a little bit more, decided that that was probably not the recommendation that they would give you. Um, the, so they did not, see, oh, and we, the staff itself, planning staff did not recommend this because it is spot zoning. Um, it is in violation of state law because of that spot zoning. Um, and it does violate the intent of the Lincoln <coughs> County Zoning Resolution. It's what opens all parcels within the district for rezoning, constitutes an arbitrary, Precious action and conveys a benefit to the property owner not available to all other owners in the district. Um, it is recommended the petition to rezone parcel is denied by the Lincoln County Commission. Uh, and the Planning Commission recently hired Ms. Sharon Armstrong as a consultant, <coughs> and she will answer any questions you may have regarding this. Okay. Did did you tell them the report from the public hearing on this? Oh, I'm so terribly sorry. We do have two, um, two more people speak. Mr. Mr. Cooley spoke and... Barn? And no, no, Mr. Barn. Um, Mr. Okay, Mr. Okay. We're getting a little out of order. She's reporting now. We, yeah. We'll be given the talk to the speak. And they did speak. Um, the person, of course, the owner was for the rezoning, and another person who lives in that area is against that rezoning. Okay. Next, I'm going to allow anyone to speak now. And I think the first person that requested to be delayed, though, uh, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. explanation of my role in this process as developer for Dollar General. Uh, my firm is asked on occasion to go find sites at certain areas where they direct us, where their market planning team says they feel they need a site. Certainly respect your opinion, sir, that you feel otherwise. Um, in this instance, they sent us coordinates um, that led us to the crossroads of Prospect and Old Lincoln Roads that combined have about 5,000 plus vehicles per day at that intersection. Their market planning team saw a need in this area to serve the growing community. Obviously, we try to find the least disruptive site in these target areas, and accordingly, we ID the property that is in question tonight um, given it is already a commercial industrial use. I'm not saying it is commercially zoned. I don't know the history there. All I'm saying is it's a, currently a commercial industrial use. Um, to the north, we have a large horse barn. Across the street is a church. Three lots down is a gas station, it's my opinion. I thought it was still in operation. Is, is that not correct? There is a gas station. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Uh, I apologize. Uh, um, we we feel it's an appropriate redevelopment of the existing industrial commercial use, um, and would be glad to answer any questions. I would like to read an excerpt of definition of spot zoning which we got from the planning department today 
generally spot zoning is an upzoning of property to a more intensive use than before. I would argue it's a less intensive use that we are requesting for the rezoning. And again, I'll be glad to answer any questions. I appreciate your time. Okay. Um, would you like to? I, I just don't know how to do this right now. Well, okay. Told you. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> plastic bags, I pick up plastic bags, beer cans, and one beer from a store now. James Berry. She asked your name, James, James Berry. We have the property next to this. We asked her. But it's just a, we got enough problems now without Dollar General coming in there with what all goes on. I don't see how anybody helps them with Dollar General sell beer. And I don't see how, I thought it was a little bit. Restriction. I, I drink. They're the only ones above on the game. Is there a uh, distance from the church that's still here? I thought it used to be 1,500 feet. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the dollar general still here in one sort of thing. But that's all I have to say about that. I'm going to post it all the way around. Okay. Thank you. They tried to uh, contact us earlier when I our property. We wouldn't sell it to them. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I don't know if it's appropriate for me to talk at this time or not. I, I, I'd like to kind of get a perspective. Yeah, you can. <coughs> but you only get three minutes this time. I want more than three. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, I, I wanted to just give a different perspective. Uh, I, I, I'm on the planning commission, chair of the planning commission, and. Um, you know, if I'm you, I'm looking at us and thinking, what in the world are you doing? Your, your staff recommends against it, your consultant recommends against it, and you guys pass it unanimously. I wanted to explain it a little bit. Now, from what I understand, there may be some additional information that I wasn't aware of, and that might change things. What, I, what we were presented with was the idea that spots, about a spot zoning issue. And um, we determined to go ahead and pass it and you know i don't really have a dog in this fight i'm not trying to advocate one way or the other but i am trying to explain what we did um, as was alluded to earlier there is a legal definition for spot zoning uh, there's a classic case from 1954 and it talks about um, spot zoning is the process of singling out a small parcel of land for use classification totally different from that of the surrounding area for the benefit of an owner of such property and to the detriment of the other owners um, so we were, th that's what we were considering and, and looking at. And I agree that spot zoning is generally not permissible or advisable. It should be avoided. However, the court, courts have said over and over that there are exceptions to this. Uh, in 2012, there was a case just right up the road here in Lynchburg where there was a gentleman who was operating a record service out of his home and they spot zoned it commercial and went to court and the court said, uh, actually the quote this is Fielding versus Metro Moore 2012 the court said not every instance of spot zoning is illegal um, there's another case from the city of Orlando Tennessee versus Robertson County in 2022 <coughs> this is a case where a family had a farm, family farm and they had a little market they were going to build out on their property they needed zone commercial uh, they did it <coughs> spot zoning it got, they got sued and the court said that as long as there was a rational basis that you can have that. The quote was, we find that the, uh, that the Bernards are not the only beneficiaries of the rezoning of their property. The local community will also benefit from the market. In light of our quite limited standard of review applicable to this decision, we find a rational basis for the rezoning resolution. Therefore, we do not find the rezoning of the Bernards property to be illegal spot zoning. So there are many of these cases. I'm no attorney, obviously. It didn't take long for you to go and Google these, and there's a lot of these. So the idea that spot zoning is illegal, and many times it is, but there certainly are exceptions, okay? So we have that in the back of our mind. But also, the most important thing that I found in, in researching this, and there are a whole lot of cases of this, is that the courts almost never uh, 
challenge the ruling of the local legislative body. It could be a planning commission or certainly the county legislative body, the, the county commission. Courts generally never overrule a decision like that. Um, McCollum versus City of Memphis, 1990. This is a quote. The court's primary resolve is to refrain from the substitution of its judgment for that of the local governmental body. An action will be invalidated only if it constitutes an abuse of discretion. If any possible reason exists justifying the action, it will be upheld. Edwards versus Allen, 2007, quote, in cases where the validity of, an or of a zoning ordinance is fairly debatable, the court cannot substitute its judgment for that of the legislative authority. Keaton versus City of Gatlinburg, 1984, quote, where a municipal body acts in zoning matters, the court's inquiry is limited as to whether a, any rational basis exists for the legislation action, and if the issue is fairly debatable, it must be permitted to stand as valid. Lafferty versus the City of Winchester over here, 2000, quote, we must favor permitting the community decision makers closest to the events to make the decision. Chemical Waste Services versus uh, Konigsberg, 1982, quote, legislative classification in a zoning law, ordinance, or resolution is valid if any possible reason can be created, can be conceived to justify it. And so there are many more like that. So what we're saying is, this is not out of the blue. We're not, you know, we, we weren't just pulling something out of the air. Um, there were, we, we believe that there were some justifiable basis for this, and that was, First of all, that this property was operating as a commercial enterprise in 2014 when the county adopted zoning. So it was it was actively there was there was commercial enterprise on it at that time. Between that time and today, it was taxed as a commercial entity. That's on the tax card. Um, you know, when they come to pay their taxes, we're, we're glad to you know categorize them as commercial, but now when they want to sell the property, we, we tell them they can't. We didn't think that was fair. The other thing was, and I realize there's opinions different ways, but we didn't see this store as a tremendous nuisance to the community. If anything, we thought, uh, you know, maybe if you're right next to it, you might not like that, but in the community in general, you know, if, I, if you live in the South Lincoln Estates, for example, maybe you might, might be convenient to go up there and, and buy something instead of having to drive all the way into town. So we're not advocating one way or the other, but we think we made a reasonable decision based on the, the facts as they, as they lie. So I'm not, I'm not telling anybody how to vote, and I'm not advocating one way or the other, but what I'm telling you is there's a rational basis to do this. Now, there may be other considerations. As I understand it, Ms. Armstrong is gonna present some other considerations, uh, but in terms of spot zoning, which is what we were considering when we voted, we didn't feel like that was an adequate reason not to approve it. So I just wanted to give everybody that update. Okay. Before Ms. Armstrong speaks, is there anyone else in the room to speak? Yes, sir. <coughs> so uh, I'll give a comment now. So I really don't want to speak, but I think it's good after listening to Mr. Eldridge there speak. But we got a committee here as a county that we pay almost $300,000 a year for their opinion. And they give an opinion on this and said you, you should deny it. We got a new commissioner here that speaks very well. But your your opinion, if, if their opinion doesn't matter, we don't need them. You voted to raise our taxes and you pay them three hundred thousand dollars a year, but you think your opinion means more than theirs. We got district people in our district, I got no trust for them. And you're on the list now. So if y'all want to vote for it, vote for it. I'm going to sue the county. I really want you to vote for it. Because I'm one of the ones that they knocked out of the $200,000. Right? Am I glad it's not there now? Yes. We, we, we thought about it and said, hey, we're glad we do not have that store there. Should the Coolies be able to put it there? Yes. They pay the taxes. They own the land. Put it there if you want to. But I'm going to try to sue you and you and you for $200,000. And it we're going to be even. Right? A little bit passionate on that, but man, you, you you don't have the right to stand up here and say you know more than them. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's going to be this portion, and now just run across.
Uh, that was for two very impassioned pleas. Unfortunately, in land use, in all cases, it comes down to what the law dictates that you can and cannot do and what the power that are granted to the commission by the state of Tennessee mm -hmm. are. So first I'd like to address something, uh, and I appreciate all points of view. I've worked in a lot of jurisdictions, in a lot of states, a lot of different projects. So I want to separate kind of the facts from the passion. Unfortunately, they're required to do that. So first I want to address the issue of spot zoning. Spot zoning was determined by the Supreme Court multiple years ago. This opinion gets reissued every once in a while. It was done in 2002. Spot zoning is only illegal if it's arbitrary, capricious, unreasonable, or violates a state statute or constitutional guarantee. So that's the first thing I want to address because that was the premise of the Planning Commission's review of this application. This particular property, just on that basis, cannot be rezoned. Why? I don't know how many of you have served for how long. I'm sure the county attorney and numbers of other people <coughs> remember the growth plan period where the county and all the cities had to come together under state statute, public chapter 1101, and sort of began a fledgling process of mapping out your growth plans. State statute codifies, and the Attorney General of the state of Tennessee rendered the opinion that if a property is not in your growth plan, and this particular property is not, it cannot be resolved. It's that simple. You either have to expand your growth plan, which for those of you who have ever participated in that process is a somewhat lengthy and torturous process you're working on a new one now. But right now, it's not in that. I checked the map, I pulled the entire plan, I got the lats, the longs, the GIS, the range. So that's the first issue that you have in considering this for a reason. The secondary issue that you have is regardless of how it's taxed, it's not zoned. <laughs> it's sitting in a virtual sea of agricultural properties. The third issue that you have in this consideration is that your zoning ordinance that this body, after much discussion and many public hearings adopted, is that it has to reside and lie against a major thoroughfare. It does not. So the staff gave the appropriate recommendation to the planning commission for those three reasons. It's not legal to spot zone if it violates the road plan, which is not only just a mere statute, it's a public chapter of state law. So you cannot resign in that circumstance. The state will be to do so. And you're subject to challenge because that's considered arbitrary and capricious and a violation of the state statute. There is a lot of discussion about the distinction between taxing a property and zoning a property. I'll give you a classic example. Farmers can have wedding event being used. Do you have any here with farm hold weddings on their farm? The buildings that they construct, the arbor, some outdoor pavilion, those are taxed as commercial. But the primary function of that land is agriculture. That's the primary function of this district, is to preserve your farmland. It's also when road requirements are listed in your zoning ordinance, it's to ensure that the corridor that you're proposing development on can absorb it. Your corridor in this particular location is not. Your infrastructure in this particular location is not. Somebody has to think about water provision, power provision, the traffic control in that general area. And once you open up a spot zone, what makes them particularly obnoxious to the surrounding neighbors and to other people is once you open up that district, it doesn't exist in a vacuum, one parcel. It simply doesn't. It's surrounded <laughs> by agricultural property. If you open this district to a spot zone, it will be followed by many, many applications for rezoning. 
it doesn't just affect this parcel, it affects every single parcel within that district. Because if you rezone it to commercial, to prove this, the next applicant comes along, let's say, and it, it opens it to every single use within the C1 district. Every use that's in that district of the zoning ordinance. If you do this, and then someone else files an application on another parcel, and you deny it, you're subject to suit because you're really treading kind of heavily on arbitrary capricious. The that's a Latin term that's been translated, but its true meaning meaning is pick and choose. I want this one, but I don't want that one. That's arbitrary capricious. So in this particular instance. I have served as a land use planner for a number of years. This is a topic that comes up in every single growing district in the country. Not only in your state, but in the surrounding states and across the nation. It's growing pains. But the one thing that you are prohibited from doing within your zoning ordinance is to corrupt the intent. And the intent of an agricultural district, district is to allow some uses. Residential also resides there. Farmers are allowed to have value added things in that district. <coughs> but the intent of it is that it excludes commercial use. So with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions that we have. What happens in these situations once this occurs is your zoning ordinance then will have to be rewritten and rewritten and rewritten to accommodate the use that the state legislature, the public chapter 1101 in the drug plan, said you can't do. So that's the decision before this body. And while I understand uh, Commissioner Eldridge's point of view, I understand your discussion about spot zoning, but there's always a political to that. If the decision is arbitrary and capricious, it violates the state statute, it's prohibited by state law. So with that, I'll answer any questions. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I uh, appreciate you, appreciate your knowledge. Not a problem. Several times in your conversation, you mentioned rezoning from A1 to C1. It's already C1. No, sir. There's no rezoning. Yes, ma'am, it is. It's taxed as that, to me, that considers it C1. No, sir. It is well, not I need to read that. Thing. Again, I understand that's the way you perceive it. But I want to make sure that everyone in the room, especially those who have to make this decision on behalf of all the residents of their community, understand that commercial activity, agriculture in some respects, is considered a commercial activity. Why? We had a training session less than a couple of months ago with the commission and the planning commission, which I thought was well received by the community. Everybody was ad adequately interested in that topic. But it tolerates agriculture and there are agricultural properties that are taxed on agricultural land as commercial. Why? Because in order to qualify as an agricultural property and receive the benefits of 127 separate state statutes that, in that insulate farming in one way or another, however it is done. Over the years, I've seen it wedding venues, music festivals, when someone determines in a court that it's not legal to do an activity on a farm, the legislature uptakes it and has that activity. It happens all the time. But they're taxed because they are required to be considered agricultural in the state of Tennessee. 15 acres of continuous property that must produce commercial sale farm goods, raw products, within a three year period. And they have to register as a farm to get a farm number. All the farmers in the room can tell you farming is not for the faint of heart. The government's kind of shadowing you every step of the way. But how it's taxed has no impact on how it's zoned. It is not zoned as commercial. It is zoned as agricultural, which is, that's how it's always been zoned. Any land that does not come before this body 
the, the county commission on recommendation, <coughs> positive or negative, or vote, starts out as agriculture. All land starts out as agriculture when you adopt your zoning ordinance. And then parcel by parcel, the uses are determined and districts are established. But my biggest issue with the pursuit of rezoning this is that it violates state statute and puts you on the radar with state. It's not a, the, the Attorney General's opinion, which followed public chapter 1101, was not a mild suggestion. The language is pretty blunt. It says it's prepared. So you're stuck there uh, with that. Spot zoning is illegal if it's arbitrary, capricious, or it violates the state law, which this way. So I will be happy to take questions from anybody in the room. I'm going to ask one because I'm more confused on the other uh, Because recently, uh, because there was some of the areas, you know, the <coughs> inside the city of the government. I didn't know the county had an urban <coughs> You don't. And I that's the point. So what I'm going to let me couch that with a better okay. explanation if okay. I can, but I'll, I'll listen to that. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So well, I just wanted it's, to it's that, you know, when, when they voted, the aldermen voted to give all the authority, you know, for the urban growth plan to the county. The county accepted that mm -hmm. also. So I'm, I'm a little, when you said it's not in the urban growth plan, I'm a little confused. So let me walk you through that. It does not reside at the time that your plan was adopted and approved. Mm -hmm by your county commission in the state of Tennessee <coughs> in 2001, <coughs> and you received a letter from the state to that effect, that it was approved. It was not in the city's road plan, and the county did not identify any parcels within that first round of road planning that were in their road plan. We're now in the process, if I understand correctly, doing a comprehensive plan, which is a broader growth plan. Um, that's what a comprehensive plan is. But at this time, this parcel does not reside in either of the city or town. Right. I, I understand that when you said it, you know, because it was not the urban growth plan, it was limited uh, you know, because it wasn't you know, in order for parcels to be developed in a county. Not, not a municipality. The county would have to have identified, as you have in your county since adopting the zoning ordinance, major thoroughfare, where development is appropriate, where the infrastructure is sufficient to support that kind of growth, and you have a thoroughfare plan. You're working on an update to a comprehensive plan, which will identify changing your growth plan. But right now, what you have is what the cities do want. You turn that over to the cities. And the reason you turned it over to the cities at that time is because you didn't have any regulations. You didn't have a zoning ordinance. You didn't have anything. And when the city decided to tell the state that they were ready to relinquish that, it's because you both now have a zoning ordinance and a zoning map you also are in the process of developing your own growth and comprehensive plan. So that right now, it does not lie within either of the county. Okay, I'm going to make a question. Sure. And if you're not three, it's not, it might not be clear. But in the case that this was written back several months on, this was a uh, case that started out in Baker County, Birmingham versus uh, Baker County versus Basically, if I you know, read the, that correctly, is this body has the rights to do whatever they see fit on that. Is that correct? You do within certain restrictions. Once you adopt a zoning ordinance, which is your legislation, right. you cannot then violate your own regulations. <coughs> The zoning ordinance requires this property to lie on a thoroughfare. It does not. So that's a restriction on the zoning ordinance element 
proposed for legislation that this body adopted on behalf of its community. Regardless of what you adopt, no county or city has the authority to upsert a federal <coughs> statute. And the federal statute was challenged early on after the birth plan on a rezoning issue. That was one of the challenges that was brought. And that's also in the packet that was provided to you. So that will be in there. And in that challenge, the appeals court wasted no time in saying, the attorney general has ruled, the law says what it says. If it's not in your growth area, it's not prime for development. It's specifically geared to insulate agricultural activity and not for cities and counties to develop in terms of infrastructure, the road services, the availability of schools, fire suppression, policing, all that kind of stuff. So that's the second challenge to the zoning business. The third challenge to it is the fact that it has never <coughs> been zoned as commercial. It can't survive the spot zoning challenge and the restrictions that the state puts on it because it's never been zoned any other way. It may have been used that way. And there's a whole nother section of training that I won't make tonight. <coughs> Non-conforming, non-compliant, and grandfather. We touched on this briefly, and they are all very distinct things. This particular property has never been zoned <coughs> for this use. And just to give you some indication of how the state looks at this and how the court looks at it, there are two litmus tests for whether something is a non-conforming use, which means it can continue or perpetuate to qualify for the statute that I heard someone cite earlier tonight, or a portion of it. First, it would have had to have been permitted, <coughs> not necessarily by the county. Someone would have had to have said, great, go out there and open up pallet, welding, whatever will occur. That never occurred. There would have had to have been a business license of some sort. There would have had to have been, you're required in the state of Tennessee to register as a business, whether you're wholesale or whether you're retail. You have to pay taxes in the state of Tennessee on your revenue for commercial or industrial activity. That did not occur on this property either. So its use, the tax use, has nothing to do with whether or not it meets that litmus test that the state established. So it cannot survive the two challenges that the state has laid out. So, and with that, I think it's your decision. A question or maybe an observation. Sure. We all started the whole back in the day, and when we did, you know, there are many, many commercial businesses that lie in the county. At the time we started the zone, they were basically grandfathered in at that time because they existed. Small stores would be a great example of that. And normally, I don't even think about this. It doesn't meet the criteria. So I would simply go over it. It doesn't meet the criteria. But the problem with this is, keyword that I just heard you say is a dental. Identify. 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 Identify.
they should not pay the price for the county's failure to identify the property in the grandfathering process. I don't know that, and I understand what you're, what you're saying. He's not fair to the business that operated all those years and paid commercial taxes. Um, I have not researched the tax record, which is that's not part of the question on whether or not this can be lawfully resolved. But I will say this. What the county did in adopting its zoning ordinance was identify areas of agriculture that specifically prohibit commercial use of certain types. Even the most recent ordinance does not allow everything. So there was recognition on the county's part that there were commercial activities. The current zoning ordinance recognizes that. Um, I don't think we have a zoning book, but there's a tremendous list of things that can be done by special exception and other ways within an agricultural or a residential district. But residential is much shorter. So the county recognized that, and those uses exist within that book. Then subsequently or before that, they identified areas where they want to grow. When they identified or do not want growth, or the city identified where there was appropriate growth within that, it's never been included in those areas. And that has to do with a number of things. Usually it has to do with fire suppression, traffic on the road, those types of things. Things that cannot be within the next 15 minutes resolved. It's not as simple as seeing them set plans. Those are issues that are prevailing upon the development of property. So it's non-status on a thoroughfare road, thoroughfare road, which is one that can handle the traffic, is going to eliminate. Its secondary issue is that regardless of whether you identify it or don't identify it, at the top of the food chain, I kind of describe it that way, there's a hierarchy for land use legislation. You can see it started in 1935. The hierarchy at the top of the food chain is growth plan because it's a mechanism that the state legislature used to force you to think about where you're putting things because the taxpayers pay for all that. They pay for the roads, they pay for the schools, they pay for the policing. And as uh, one young man conveyed, they pay for the planning department to give opinions on these topics. So that all comes at a cost to the taxpayer. Right? So as you're working your way through planning and development, if you don't identify areas where you have the resources to do that for new development without visiting the cost on your existing residents who've already paid their way, that's a disservice to them. The state wants you to figure out where you can absorb development without causing an undue burden on the people around. And the one thing that I have not heard discussed other than by young one man in the back of the room and the gentleman over here is the impact of that neighborhood. And beyond this one parcel, there's nothing in your ordinance that allows you to tell them yes and the next applicant no. That's arbitrary and capricious. When you tell Dollar General they can come in and you tell Family Dollar they can't, you're going to be sued. And then it's going to be a double problem for you because the rezoning did not meet the test. The state statutory test, or the zoning ordinance test. I dare say, though, like I said, normally I wouldn't say anything like that. Right. I would dare say the store right up the road it was identified as commercial property on the thor same thoroughfare. Well, the identification of it occurred when someone didn't go out and say, stop building pallets. You can't build pallets. Can, the right? store, can, we, can we go into the store and say you can't talk? Selling coats? Yes, they can. But I mean, we didn't, so we identified it as a commercial product <coughs> at that time. And well, it, I don't know which store you're talking about. The you can go around and hit it from there. Pardon? You can go around and hit it from there. It's on the same store. 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 It's
And so they won. Just fly on quarter. It didn't exist before your zombie mode. Yeah. It's on the same protocol. It existed. No change. This was existing also. No change in use whatsoever. They have not requested to rezone. They have not requested to increase traffic. They have not requested to go to a higher intense use. I appreciate what they're they're really doing. Doing. I just think that it's a hard decision because it, the way it's it a was, tough decision the way it's for everybody. And the way it was, I just think it's a super. And I'm not <laughs> saying it can't be done. What they will have to do <coughs> as a jurisdiction in order to make this a lawful change is you will have to rewrite your zoning ordinance to remove the thoroughfare requirement. You will have to amend your growth plan to include this area as an area of growth after holding public hearings and hearing from your, your neighbors. Some of them may be for it, some of them may be not. But in order to lawfully do this, you need to find another path. You can't do it under this one. And there isn't a special exception that allows it either. The language of your ordinance is pretty fun. It violates the intent. <coughs> the intent of the ordinance for agricultural is to eliminate those uses which are not listed as either special exceptions, variances, or permitted by right, which is what the permitted list is. That's by right. I can build a house, I can run a farm. So those are the ground rules. And as unfortunate as they are, those are the ground rules. Yes, sir. Thank you for your time. You're so, right, could you clarify what about upzoning from ag to an, a residential district to allow for a subdivision? Upzoning, residential occupation is allowed in the agriculture zone by right. So, <coughs> does that answer your question? It's not upzoning. Uh, I know there are a lot of words that come from larger jurisdictions that this body is not aware of. They're on their first revolution of the zoning ordinance. It's a very rudimentary state of template that they template that they may or may not have revised a, a little bit over the years, but not a lot. But residential is insulated by state statute. If you own a farm, you can build a house. If you have workers on your farm, you can build those houses. That's insulated by state statute in the state of Tennessee. So right to farm is without a doubt for land use the single most legislated thing in this state. I'm not talking about right to farm or build a farmhouse. Or but you're saying upzoning, you're calling it upzoning. Residential use is allowed in the agricultural district. And even any intensity houses, of residential use is allowed? Pardon? Any intensity of residential use? 100 lot subdivision? Well, what is, is your request is, or your, your question is, do they upzone? Do they allow subdivision? I'm trying to boil it down to its essence. If it lies on the thoroughfare, if there is sufficient infrastructure, if they have sufficient fire suppression, if there's sufficient room in their schools, they're required by law to look at all of those things. Sure. Before they, in your terminology, upzone. That's not what it's called in Tennessee. Here it's called density. So they refer to it by a level of density. R1 is single family. R2 is duplex. R3 is apartment complexes. R4 is a major subdivision development with a mixed use. They have mixed use. They have planned unit development. So does that answer your question? Somewhat. So the county would be at risk though if they wanted to do a mixed-use development on a road that's called not a main thoroughfare. They Is that correct? They don't have mixed-use zoning in this district. In this okay. They have not evolved to that point. Again, the, the goal of growth planning in Tennessee was to kind of leave things in the state it was in. Agriculture. It's a very big agricultural state. And as you adopted zoning, you needed to keep pace with your infrastructure needs and the needs of the population that was coming in with more intense development. So did everybody understand what I answered to him? I, I will tell you I am Switzerland in this case. The county employed me under contract to give you the legal zoning perspective. Every zoning word used 
has a legal meaning. And every zoning ordinance is a legal document. People tend to look at them as suggestions. They're not. They're legislative documents. And the state of Tennessee takes them very seriously in these cases. So you had a question there? I did. So for clarification on the being grandfathered in, so these two businesses that are on this road grandfathered in, they can sell to another company that wants to continue to produce pallets or to continue to they sell gas. Can. But if they were to sell to someone else that wanted to do a different use, that would not be allowed. So that once there's a discontinuance of that use, there is no more commercial or grandfathered in property. You're correct. That brings you back to, I built pallets before there was zoning. I've been allowed to build pallets. No one's intervened in that process. At some point, I did some welding, right? But at this point, in order for that commercial entity to exist, one, there has to be a thoroughfare road. They're filing for a rezone for a reason. It's because they need one, because that use and that use are miles apart in your ordinance. So it can't be accomplished with grandfathering. There are three terms, legal terms, which claim use. Grandfathering, non-conforming, which is the one that their argument was, and they don't meet the witness test for that, and non-compliant. So are there any other questions? I know this feels like you went back to school, and I'm sorry that it takes that form, but because it's legal language and it has county-wide ramifications for this decision, it's important that I convey it sticking to the law rather than the personality. Because you'll always get in trouble if it's the personality. You've got to stick to the law. So are there any other questions from the audience? Seeing none, okay. Here's where we are with the motion. You can make a motion for change of zoning. You can make a motion to not change the zoning. If it gets a second, then we'll have a roll call vote. Do you understand what we're saying? Yes, I do. Let's have a vote. Before we do this, I have a question. Yes, sir. Oh, it's kind of off topic a little bit. But we've got these things here to be voted. Yes, sir. Why don't we vote to use them? Well, we can use them. But it's usually my call if I think we don't have something that's controversial. I understand where you're coming from, and this would be one of those uses that we want to set up. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. But anyway, it is a good point. I'll try to do a better job. We're paying the service fee on this, so we can get the service out of it. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
I don't know. Okay. Here's I'm gonna be honest. We're, we're going to open it for discussion because we have a, a motion that's been properly seconded. Under discussion, you have the right to amend that motion to say, I want to amend the motion to approve the rezoning, and we would vote on that amendment. If it passed, then we would vote on the motion as amended to approve it. If it failed, we're back to not changing the zoning. Everybody clear where we are? The floor is now open for discussion on the motion before this committee, and the motion is to not change the zoning. Well, as I was saying, as I was saying, we'll make a motion. I mean, the same as zoning. I mean, you know, we adopted some rules and legislation out of different states and everything. And, and I'm like everybody else is saying, well, we hate being told what we can't consider the property by people that appointed the board that's not elected and it's been like a revolving door. And there's some people that fall on and off the plan. I mean, who's in there saying who's right and who's wrong? But uh, with the the way the laws are stated out there, I mean, it shows that it can't be rezoned. Here's, here's one thing. I You're mean, addressing me, and you need to be addressing them. So well, you, I ain't got a microphone. Well, why don't you come to me? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that that's, that's the people that's going to be making the decision. I just keep y'all in their advice. <laughs> I start sweating and breaking out, and I start stinking because I, I just don't look the other. But that, that, that's like I say, I mean, I'm, I'm really against the, this planning commission because they tell everybody what we can and can't do with our property. And I don't think anybody here likes that being said. But we have to adopt those and use those things because of growth and we don't want uh, a major industry right next door. I mean, uh, everybody was all over the court over the Jack Daniels stuff coming in. But planning and zoning, I mean, the way that she stated there today, according to state laws, this can't be changed from a1 to C1, or it would have been done two years ago, or two and a half years ago. So the way I see it is, I mean, I don't think this can pass, and I hate it. I mean, I hate it. I mean, I wish I could pass it and make money. I'm all about making money, but according to rules that people adopted, I think 2014, is that right? This can't pass, and that's just the way I see it. Okay, Commissioner Walker. I just want to say I concur with um, Commissioner Frazerian and I try and research every issue and it's not easy because somebody's always not going to be happy with what the decision is but I always go a little above and beyond what's local and I did reach out to CTAS to ask what their opinion was on everything and they stated if it's grandfathered the major thoroughfare rule wouldn't apply they shouldn't resign it as is, but if they see <coughs> operations, it will lose the grandfather status. And that was confirmed by the question earlier. So I think, unfortunately, we do have to follow what the rules are. So. Did I understand that the Planning Commission has voted two separate ways on this? Voted two doing two months of this? No. We, we had a vote, and then the original when it came up at vote we voted to approve it to come to this body the next meeting we had a discussion and said well maybe that wasn't the correct thing we we're, we're grappling with this just like everybody else is that's my question it was approved in a little bit it was approved right and then the subsequent meeting we our discussion was that probably wasn't the right decision uh, but we you know at that point it already been set up I, and when i spoke earlier i'm just trying to tell you what our thought process was i'm not trying to advocate you know, again for the planning commission. So, if the vote is what it is from the planning commission, but that doesn't affect what this body is going to do. Okay. What else? I'm still hung up on this identified thing, so I got a motion for me. You're in order, and you are made to make an amendment. I believe we amend this motion and have it sent back to the planning commission. I think there's some terrible clarification on the word in my in my case identify. I think that uh, both, both parties have a good case. I understand the case for agricultural land. I got a point. I understand the case for the landowner in this case because I think, and he probably thinks, and I, I, I kind of think he's right. 
this case because he'd been paying taxes at commercial rate, and he had every right to think that that was for us to So I would move that uh, we send this back to the committee and the committee hash this out some more and, and, and identify some of these key terms. Let's talk about grandfather, talk about all these things, and come back to us with uh, those facts. Do I have a second? The amendment. Make a call and make a second. Okay, any discussion on the amendment? I got to do that last It appears to me that that's already happened. We've got an expert that has sign it out and if we put it back to the planning commission then they're what we're asking them to do is to change the state law to change our ordinance and to have us a growth plan in 30 days so if they can do that i'll be for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay here's okay the vote, we will have a roll call vote. This is on the amendment. The amendment is to send this back uh, to planning and zoning. Uh, this starts the process all over from ground zero. Am I correct? Well, if we send it back to them, we vote yes on the amendment. This will be sending it back to planning and zoning. You will vote on the vote. A yes vote will be sending it back. A no vote will be no, we're not sending it back. Mr. Chairman, before you make the vote, our planner indicates to us that he thinks that the planning and zoning board will have the authority to make the vote up or down and see if that is the submission of the application. So the amendment you're saying was out of order. That's right. I really was out of order, so we're back to our original motion. That original motion was not to change the zone. Any other discussion? We will now have a roll call. Clarification. Clarification. She said they can go back and resubmit, no matter the judgment. Should something change? Yes, they can go back and resubmit at any time they like. Sixty days. Well, it, okay. Tonight you're gonna get an answer, yes or no. But you can resubmit for a zone change. Am I correct on that? Again, you do not you can, have a restriction that they you can. You can. You can reapply. So what's gonna make it any different if I reapply? Uh, you know, I, I don't see the future no more than you do. Okay. 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 A yes vote in this motion is to not change the zoning. You understand? So the motion was to not change it. So if you vote yes, you're saying not to change the zoning. A no vote is that you would be changing the zoning. I understand. Okay. Now call the vote. Commissioner Ralph Walker, right, make sure I'm voting the way I want to, but I do not want to rezone it. That is a yes vote. Okay, so yes. Commissioner Coley? Yes. Commissioner 
Commissioner Hamrick? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Frazeran? Yes. Commissioner Walker? Yes. Commissioner Gunterberg? Yes. Commissioner Brown? No. Commissioner Douglas? Yes. Commissioner Caldwell? Yes. Commissioner Bryant? No. Commissioner Rogers? Yes. Commissioner Cunningham? Yes. Commissioner Ashley? Yes. Commissioner Taylor? Yes. Commissioner Ewan? Yes. Commissioner Nix? Yes. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Eldridge? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Spray? Yes. Nineteen yes, two no, one, I'm sorry, <coughs> two no, two absent, one day. Okay. The motion to <coughs> not rezone passes. The next item, industrial development for Mr. Pennington. Pews are up, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> so we're broken back. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> Alright, good evening everybody. It's, uh, it's actually been a little past time for our industrial development report, so I have a lot of catching up to do, but I'm, I'm going to try to cut this short. Uh, we'll start with what was the bad news. Oh, excuse me, I had some dental work done here today. We'll start with what was the bad news of the summer. Uh, Aaron's Co. had uh, furloughed around 130 workers this summer. Uh, it's kind of been a move reminiscent of what Goodman used to occasionally do. But they continue to pay benefits, including health care uh, for these workers, and we're scheduled to bring the workers back on September the 3rd. The good news is that they offered workers an opportunity to return back to work yesterday. And so I know those folks are, are proud to be back to work. Our existing industries continue to hire with several holding uh, weekly open interviews. Uh, we had a couple of industries uh, specifically here attack in Copperwell, they set up at the recent one day of OPA event uh, to assist people with uh, resume writing and, and trying to get people to apply for these open positions. So, I mean, they're just going way out of their way trying to find some workers. We have a lot more open jobs than we have workers, and we, we definitely need some workers here in the county. Let's go through the various industrial parks and, and update y'all on the latest. Start with the Bullington Park. The grant project to construct a 100,000 square foot building pad is now complete. We have updated our drone footage and the Im imagery of the site out there for our website. We've updated our marketing flyers, uh, have shared and updated the site information with all our partners and our site consulting firms. Uh, we have already hosted a site visit in June. The state project manager will provide updates as they become available from this company. Uh, talk now about the Fayetteville Lincoln County Park, which is on the Winchester Highway. Uh, the IDB continues to promote the 250,000 square foot building pad site. This is the old Posey House. Uh, site consultants and real estate brokers continue to express interest in the site and for a good reason. It's located on a, uh, an established park, it's directly on a four-lane highway. Uh, it has industrial grade utilities. And of course, it features the 250,000 square foot pad that would expedite a company's construction timeline. We have uh, recently submitted this site for two projects. Uh, staying within that same park, the former JCF building uh, has some new owners. Cam Dog Housing LLC, they have the building listed in all its equipment with a real estate broker out of Memphis. Uh, the new owners would like to sell everything just as it is. Uh, uh, including the equipment and everything to uh, an end user who would restart the business. And we've met with the real estate broker and we've even shown the building to an existing industry that has shown interest in the building. We've also shared the listing information with all our partners. Uh, so uh, uh, so they can, we will submit this building for projects. The requirements uh, meet the building specs. Moving on out to Runway Center, 
the only available sites that we've got in Runway Center are two small commercial lots that are at the entrance of the park, and then the 26 acre pad ready site, which features a 200,000 square foot pad. We have submitted this site for several projects. The two small commercial sites, uh, they continue to get numerous views by real estate brokers. We've actually had a couple of companies who wanted to, to put in some RV storage and mobile home sales into those areas, but neither one of those kind of businesses fit in with the covenants of the park. So it's <coughs> about, you know, why we haven't allowed those businesses in there. That's, that's the reason why. Uh, Dayton Freight building is now under construction with completion expected by the end of the year. I had people tell me, you know, you just made all this stuff up. There's no company coming. They've been waiting for them to build for a year and a half. But, you know, that's uh, we're excited about them uh, coming into our industrial park out there. Be some really good paying jobs available first of the year. And as I said earlier, we have lots of jobs available, uh, more jobs than, than what we have uh, workers. And it seems to be a nationwide problem. The uh, Horizon Industrial Park is still a work in progress. Uh, the state of Tennessee site certification is still underway. TDOT continues to work on the road, industrial access road, which we're grateful for. Uh, we have submitted the Horizon Park uh, for a couple of different projects and even had a couple of commissioners that have gone out there and, and uh, tried to help pitch the project on site. I think the Horizon Park is just going to take some time, but it has. Uh, I think it has a tremendous future for us. Uh, projects from the state and TVA and all our other partners, as well as site consultants, direct contacts from, from companies continue to be less than what they were this time last year. And, and that's very typical for a presidential election year. It kind of slows down and people wait to see which, which direction things are going to swing. So uh, the IDB continues to host bi-monthly plant managers and HR director meetings. Uh, from our local industries. In June, the meeting uh, of the guest speaker was Ms. Regina Locker. She is the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act Business Service Rep. She provided information on workforce grant opportunities that are available here in Lincoln County. And uh, the state, you know, trying their best to help our industries get some workers. Uh, talked about this before, lack of available housing continues to be an issue for our industry. And I'll say that again, lack of available housing is a huge problem for our industry. Local industries have lost qualified workforce candidates to fill key, key positions because we don't have available housing. The IDB has taken action just yesterday morning to uh, do a housing study <coughs> and provide us with the data that we need to show developers so we can work towards some kind of solution to this lack of housing. Uh, you know, I feel, personally feel like we need to maybe be a little more developer friendly in our zoning regulations and kind of seem to be headed in the wrong direction there. But, uh, another big problem has been child care. And uh, the IDB continues to work towards solutions to the lack of available child care options. Uh, if, if more workers had child care available, they would enter the workforce. So, you know, we're trying to find ways to, to get some potential workers that way. And, the IDB has met with both the city and the county zoning departments. Uh, lastly, we continue to collaborate with our partners to overcome some of these workforce challenges uh, and get existing employees, maybe the training that they need to advance from within. Uh, opportunities such as our 13-week industrial maintenance boot camp program, which was funded with a TBA Invest Prep, Invest Prep grant. Uh, this boot camp is set to uh, start the first week of September, so we're pretty excited about the possibilities there. Uh, one last thing, I almost forgot the uh, IDB is collaborating with the University of Tennessee Space Institute leadership on a plan to target and attract defense and aerospace uh, industries to Lincoln County. So we're going to have uh, more details uh, in regards to that in, in the coming months. Uh, this is certainly uh, not everything that the IDB has been doing. I've just kind of hit the high spots here, but if anybody has any questions, be happy to uh, answer. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We're ready for budget report, Mr. Brown. Okay, I'm speaker. Uh, the budget committee for the county of West Lake County, Lake County, met to be noticed. EMA office on August 6th, 24th, 6 o'clock p.m. 
and uh, it can be extended yearly. It normally does in July 1st. I don't think that the law is aware of this. I just simply think that uh, all the changes going on, we simply don't need to be reviewing that. I ask that you go to the law enforcement committee for their review and then send it back to us before we do anything uh, on that item. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I'm not prepared to, I don't have the contract to form you, but I thought it would totally expire. We've already done our extra year within 90 day periods. That's all we've got is 90 days. As I understand it, that letter has already been sent to this uh, outfit. Uh, as we are going to, we're going to review So, maybe it's one of the other. Okay. Keep saying that, I'll have a second. Second, I'll second. Okay, I'll have a second on that. Yeah. The only thing, and I've got, I'm just reading the contract here, and uh, I've got it on my phone. Uh, it can be renewed for one year term if you can agree to both parties. Uh, and each such renewal, which should be around you by the uh, if, if the bid doesn't increase basically more than 5%, then the, the contract can be renewed, and it can also be extended for 90 days. I, I simply think, as I stated earlier, that it is the legislative body's job to redo the contract, not anybody else. That's what the law says. Now, that's what the Tennessee Supreme Court says. So that, that's just where I'm at. I just think the law enforcement committee should go over, look at it, and just send it back to us with recommendations. Just that's up. I think the company's done a good job. Yeah. Um, Commissioner Caldwell. Jennifer Wallace to the list. Commissioner Caldwell had sent me that. I left her off and Keith White. Okay. Is it possible? <coughs> okay, Keith White was not on the. No, so I read it. Okay. Okay, we'll come, I'm sorry. We'll come back there. Okay. Commissioner Cunningham, Commissioner Mitchell, you step Keith White to add to that list. Yes. I'm <coughs> sorry. She'll take that. Uh, oh, yeah. <coughs> okay, let's vote on the addition the previous list on that. Uh, then we added uh, Keith White to that. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, uh, opposed, no. Okay. All right. Now, we have a motion that's been properly seconded. That motion basically is that uh, the Senate the, the look at that contract for the medical care at the jail by the law enforcement and then come back with a recommendation to this body. <coughs> That's basically correct. That's yes, okay. right. Okay. I appreciate it. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, can I get some can get somebody maybe with some knowledge on this estate? Sure. sure. The there was there was situations that that uh, was brought up that caused you know, that they wanted to open the bid study. You know, it, 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 you know, speak to the I apologize for my attire. I'm sorry. I was okay. out with my okay. Okay. today. Uh, you've any objection? Uh, uh, Commissioner Fred Rand has requested uh, that uh, Sandy be able to address the commission. Any objections? Sure. So it was initially. Yeah, come on. So it was initially discussed between the current sheriff, which is Sheriff McConnell, and uh, we had some issues with the doctor, which is Dr. Bates, where we had uh, some narcotics inside the facility, which is Suboxone and Subcutex being brought into the facility. And there was a current set of protocols that was set in place to hopefully stop it from getting inside the facility um, to where the other inmates could possibly be exposed to it. So those set of rules that was set in place and protocols were not followed exactly. So when it was brought to Sheriff McConnell attention, she decided to meet with uh, the nurse practitioner, her name is Wendy. And when she met with Wendy, she spoke with her and um, decided that she would pull all the stuff you take the box and etc outside the facility completely we well, had an incident that happened back fast forward a week or two later where we had a couple of females that got problems in the facility that was very sick this was you know later in the afternoon the nurses leave typically 5 30 or so in the afternoon 
So with that being said, um, they were wanting to give Succutax to a female that was seven months pregnant with no prenatal care. And they had contacted me, the, the jail administrator, and I told her I couldn't override Sheriff McConnell's uh, rule that she needed to contact her. So at that point, um, Vicki, the jail administrator, decided that she would send them two inmates out to the hospital to get care. So you fast forward, you know, this was Friday afternoon, I'm gonna say 3.30-ish, maybe. Um, that afternoon, Dr. Bates had called and talked with um, Sheriff McConnell and was very ugly to her on the phone. That's what was told to me. So we fast forward to Monday, where we had a meeting, which was myself, Chief Deputy Bradford, um, Zeke George, Vicki Abisa, and we got on the phone with uh, Richie, which is the COO of the company, and Dr. Bates. And when we spoke with him, he was very erratic, screaming um, at Sheriff McConnell, and said, are you gonna fire me? Well, of course, she didn't have the right to fire him. This is a contract with the county. So, we had another issue happen where we had the female had been given subcutex and she cheated it. When it's in cell and handed it off to another inmate. Well, the other inmate tested positive for subcutex. So that was the whole point in not bringing that inside the facility, which we understand there are rules and regs that you have to follow. But we were just simply wanting to send it back out to have the RFP sent out to see what was out there. So that's kind of where we were. And that's why we didn't involve law enforcement. We didn't have time. Okay. Any questions? No comment. Okay. Uh, and I don't know what happened. I just know what I did is I called TCI. Mm -hmm. And I talked to a fellow up there named Walt. His last name is Walt. I don't know what happened. Well, Walt. He's the director. And uh, I don't know what happened. I don't know who got mad at who and who bothered it. That's not my intent here. My intent is to go through the committee center. Correct. But his exact words to me, and this was Mr. Walt, whoever he is, he said, and he said, this is what I should say, if I was going to say it, that the standard of care was followed. Let me make sure I get this right. The standard of care was clearly followed in this issue as far as the drug was clearly followed. And the, and no matter what, I guess that's the reason you're mad, I don't know, I, I don't know, is that it, it also says that the, no person can countermand the medical staff. That's what, that's what TCI says, that's exactly what it says. So I simply wanted to go through the committee system. I'll probably vote to rebid the thing. But I it's think already that, been sent out. Yeah, well, it's already been sent out. Yeah, this committee will stop anything. Correct. The legislative body can stop anything. Correct. So I just think that it didn't go through the proper procedure in that the <coughs> law states that the legislative body shall. Okay, and I'll interject one thing. And I assume this was true. In this, when they called the meeting, kind of an emergency meeting, he, is it correct? He drank on multiple occasions. Okay, but he, he, left, he left Johnson. Johnson uh, County, uh, Sheriff Wardley. He let them hang and high and drive by and email. And just walked out. And walked out. And walked out. So that's, that's where it was imperative. It wasn't because of the situation exactly with Dr. Bates or his company. It was just, we need to be vetted with a company that allows to give us medical care. Because what happens if he walks out on us? Because he not only threatened to me, but threatened also to Sheriff McCall with a full contract. I just went through the minutes, all of you. I went through the minutes, and it did a great, 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 great. <coughs> and then what I found out was said, all of a sudden you're not. It was great to make a That's just, I just think it's what they should do. If they fail, they pass. I don't know. Murray, did you want to speak? Yes, sir. I was at the Tennessee Sheriff's Association week for last. The reason they pulled the contract, and I did a little check into it, for those of you who don't know, my daughter is actually the head nurse at the jail. Uh, she was prior to all of this. It, it, it's a big cluster, but anyway, uh, 
the reason they walked out of Johnson City is basically the very reason that this has occurred, and that is they got overridden by the sheriff. Medical staff got overridden by the sheriff. And TCI strictly says that you cannot override medical. And this, Sandy, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a new TCI standard, the safety tax and the suboxone, because of the overdoses when people leave the jail. And believe me, I was I was 100% against it when I was there, okay? Uh, the problem is you have people come in that are on fentanyl, which these two, I think, may have very well been on fentanyl, cocaine, whatever. Anyway, but fentanyl users especially, they go into jail, we cut them off, just high and dry, keep them a year, and they've got a prescription at home for the dosage they were taking when they went to jail, which took them four years to get to this high dosage. They get home and they take their regular dosage and OD and die, which has put a lot of liability back on the prison system and county jails. So that is why TCI put that in place to give the safety tax and the, and the uh, support. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree with that in any form of fashion uh, as far as what they put out there. It's just the situation where the only reason the RFP was sent out was simply because I went to myself and, and Joyce and, and Jeff, went to the county mayor and spoke to Ed, and it was simply because he had threatened to pull our contract. And if we're left, and, and Barry can speak on this, if we're left hanging with a bag with 200 inmates with no medical, we're the best. But, correct me if I'm wrong, in the, in the heated conversation, I'm the sheriff and nobody tells me how to run my jail. Like the conversation <coughs> with me and him and, him and Joyce? The existing sheriff, okay. yes. I'm the, I won't say the exact same words, but I'm the sheriff and nobody tells me how to run my jail was the conversation after the inmates had already been removed when the medicine was on the way. And the two inmates that we're speaking of, by the way, you're getting a bill from St. Thomas for about weeks to stay up there. But uh, What's the, <laughs> the two inmates came back on Somebody come back on safety test missions. On the exact medication that was that the doctor recommended to begin with. But then she cheated and passed it so, off to the other person. And that nurse was fired. Yes. Immediately. Okay. So. Everybody kind of understand where we're all in this motion. It was a situation that, you know, I think everybody thought they were doing right, whether it was doing right or not. It was a situation that uh, the two people were sent to Lincoln County Hospital because it was about the time that they weren't going to have medical service. And one of them was seven months pregnant, and, and I think both of them were drug users, and they were coming down off the hood. They was afraid of the lady uh, losing the child, and, uh, and maybe something happened. So I agree that this does need to go back to law enforcement, but does, do we have time? I guess is my question. That, my question is when they meet. Can we call? Have to when they call a special call me? Well, this met last month, so it's not even going to court. Right down there? It is scheduled on the court. Yeah, so that'll be October. Unless you call special call. We have a special meeting call. It's got a bell or something. Their contracting goes from 90 days from uh, July 1st, uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's one of these, it needs to be settled. Uh, it's not settled, so, uh, it's, the bids have been set out. The RFP has been sent out, and uh, on August the 5th, if I'm not incorrect, Myself, um, Sheriff McConnell, and uh, Chief Deputy Bradford um, met with the Sheriff of Lettmore and explained to him the concerns on what was going on and you know, what we were concerned about. 
um, so he is aware of this process that we're going through. When are the bids due back? Dana, do you know the date on it? Because I don't have it right at the clock. When are the RFPs due back? It should be soon. August 28th? August 28th. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thank <laughs> you. 